All right. Welcome to Raw and Real Heart to Heart Conversations with Marjorie, that's me, uh, and my friend Dawn. And uh, welcome. We are just so excited to have you here. We started talking, gosh, before the pandemic, during the pandemic, um, and had such juicy conversations, we finally decided it wasn't fair to not include you. So we are here. Um, I, a little bit about us. I am uh, founder, uh, CEO, I suppose, of Big Bold Love, uh, life coaching company, and I focus on relationships, uh, especially around communication, because to me, if you can communicate, like any relationship is, has the potential to be fantastic. Um, you know, all depends on the other person, of course, too, but you have a much greater chance if, uh, if communication is going well. So, and that's one of the things that Dawn and I love to do together is communicate. And we met in a communication course, Dawn, we're, this is the longest intro we've had. I, I don't know if you want to say anything about you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love getting to know you and, you know, you allowing other people to get to know you. It's really cool. Um, so my name is Dawn Farley. Um, I'm, I hail currently out of the Charlotte area and I am a 25 year hair professional turned administrative assistant. So um, I run my own company and it's called Dawn of a New Day Virtual Admin. And what I do is I make your day, all those little things that you can't stand to do to manage your business. I actually like doing them. Give me a spreadsheet any day. I'm all over it. Um, and, you know, so um, and I also work for a catering company and I work for a, a professional organizer to move her business forward. Um, and I'm your bestie. And I love being your bestie. And it's an honor being your bestie. Yay. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yes. And one of the things that Donna and I love the most about each other is that nothing's off the table. <laughs> we can call each other to complain. We can call each other and uh, want the other person to pull us out of whatever we're in. We can call the other person and want the other person to join us in whatever we're in. <laughs> Um, and one of the things that we've, we've gotten pretty good at is asking for how we want the other person to listen to us, which, uh, which makes that possible. You know, if you just want to wallow a little bit, okay. Although I think we tend not to call each other when we want to wallow because our conversations usually are uplifting <laughs> in some way. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, and then uh, just to include all of it, uh, if you haven't followed my Instagram or anything else like that, uh, my husband Dave and daughter Isabella and I are seriously, seriously considering a move. Um, we currently live in South Carolina, and I am currently in an Airbnb in Hamburg, New York, uh, which is just south of Buffalo. And we have been here since Sunday. It is today, Thursday. Um, and we're here checking it out because we are ready for a move. And we just, we discovered this town. <laughs> um, it all started, again, in a conversation uh, between Dave and I and has blossomed into why are, we, why are we talking about waiting for retirement where we want to live? Like, why don't we just move there now? And so we're here checking out Hamburg, and so far so good. So that's probably what we'll be talking about today, but who knows? Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, it, it's so interesting, and, and it always comes together. Like, when you and I get on the phone, you know, we, we couldn't be more opposite in, you know, what, what's going on in our lives currently. And yet, at the same time, there's a common thread. So I got this morning dancing in the unknown mm. and like really dancing in the unknown. And I got really moved, Marge, like, oh, because who I know myself to be is control. Right. Like, this is what I want and go after it. Like. Yeah. Right. And. That's not even there. It's. um it's a little scary and it's a little fun. 
<laughs> and like, that's right where you are. That's right where we are. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you know, what could this look like? And, you know, what, um, what actually works and what doesn't. So. Well, what's crazy perfect. for us is, you know, like everything just seems to fall into place so easily. And um, I mean, I just, you know, and then my brain just goes crazy. It's like, no, it can't be this easy. Now there's got to be some, no, you know, you're going to move and like something horrible is going to happen, right? Like last time you did a big move like this, you you ended up getting divorced. (laughs) So, you know, my, yeah, like quieting my mind and just allowing myself to be on the ride is, is probably the biggest challenge this week. And it just feels so right here. Um, gosh, the first day we walked 12,000 steps. Oh my gosh. I mean, where I live, I'm lucky if I walk 12,000 steps in a week. (laughs) Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, like yesterday we walked down the street to meet a new friend that we had made for ice cream. And, uh, Mm. and then we, we picked up burgers and drove to the lake and watched the sunset and, uh, just, yeah, you know, and the, the values here match ours. Um, mm-hmm. You know, people have been asking us, you know, why do you want to move? Why are you looking here? So, well, you know, South Carolina is very individually minded, and that's great for them, but that doesn't work for us. And we are very community minded. My son, happy to stay in South Carolina and, you know, live off the grid and whatever it else that he dreams of doing, but that's not us. And I mean, just from the first, the first encounter was at the grocery store and, and, uh, you know, plastic bags have been outlawed (laughs) for lack of a better word, uh, in the state, the entire state is, has, you know, you can't get single use plastic bags. Wow. And, you know, Yay. all the straws we get are compostable and just all these little things that really matter to us mm. and don't necessarily matter to other people, but they matter to us and living somewhere where we're around other people that it matters to <laughs> matters to us. And uh, it's just, it's those little things, right? Like mm. somebody, we were walking down the street and somebody beeped the horn and waved at us and we're like, Pretty sure you don't know us. And uh, we told, you know, this older woman. I do wrong. What do we do? Do we- <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it was it was definitely a friendly beep. You know, it was the beep beep. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> but uh, Isabella waved back. And, you know, by the time, you know, my brain processed everything, they were long gone. <laughs> but, you know, this this new friend of ours, Barbara, she's an older woman. And she uh, we told her and she's like, oh, yeah, people do that. And, uh, you know, I don't know, there's something different. It's different. It's very Midwestern here, but it has, you know, New York, New York state values, which, you know, definitely are, like I said, much more in line with, with us. And my gosh, everybody puts a mask on going into a store. Like Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody has a mask on. Like it's, it's just part of what you do. And Mm. Yeah, you know, and and yeah, I keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, like, I, or you know, I keep waiting for the the. Yeah, but what about this? It doesn't yeah, like have the skeletons, or you know, what's the bad street? I, what's the you know? Is there like a Stepford wife thing going on here? Like, what? Right. You know, all these thoughts, I can imagine. This is too perfect. What's uh, you know? everybody's lived here their whole entire lives. They're not going to be open to new friends, right? Like those are the thoughts that are, Mm -hmm. and it is, you know, it is very much a generational, you know, community from, from what we've heard, you know, people, even if they leave, they come back and, um, and that doesn't have to necessarily mean anything about us. Yeah. Do they have a, a little town newspaper? They do, and we've heard about it, but we haven't picked one up. That's a good idea. 
Well, I'm yeah. I'm wondering if you don't go to the library, right? And, and like, because you know that's one way that you can see, you know, some of the things that happen in the town. Mm-hmm. You know, the the time before, you know, if you look a couple episodes or a couple um, issues, you know, for each season, you know, kind of let you know the the rise and fall, and you know, like what's the worst thing that's ever happened there, or you know, right. how did they handle it? And that's well, a good idea see that through the pandemic obviously too it's probably the worst thing that's ever happened anywhere so it's you know i mean that and sounds like they're really handling it responsibly yeah i mean i think for the most part it's the whole state you know it's a state mandate it's an executive order to wear your mask Mm. you know south carolina's governor says i trust everybody to do the right thing you know here it's no this is what you're going to do um and, you know, there's definitely parts of I don't want government in my life, but at the same time, in this case, when the government in your life is all about keeping everybody safe, uh, that's, that's important to me. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, I look out the window and the, the recycling bin is next to the trash bin and, you know, currently where I live. My neighbors burn their trash. And granted, you know, it's, I think part of it too for us is that there's, even where we live, there's a big difference. You know, we're on the edge, you know, we're on the very, very rural side of, of where we live. And, and this is the very, very urban side here. And so, so even within South Carolina, you know, there's a big gap. Um, And so we're, you know, I keep, I keep trying to remind myself and remind Isabella of that. Like, yeah. you know, we, we're not comparing apples to apples here um, because we don't live in town in South Carolina either. Right. So, um, but yeah. yeah, your, your rural experience of South Carolina is individual. and Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, if we lived in town in Greenville, it would be different. You know, a lot of the things that were like, oh, my gosh, this is so great, might already exist there, too. Um, And snow. (laughs) We'll have snow up here. (laughs) Yeah, so where um, I I know, right, but I think it might be interesting for people because, you know, you say like Hamburg. (laughs) it's, It's like. Where in the world did you find Hamburg? I mean, like, what what was that, you know, to find this little small town in the middle of nowhere? Well, maybe it's not in the middle of nowhere, but I mean. Yes, 20, 20 minutes south of Buffalo. This area is considered the South Towns. I have learned that. Um, south Towns are apparently very different from the North Towns. Uh, those would be the, the towns north of Buffalo. Um, and uh, we went into this little new age shop and kind of got the rundown because I was like, hey, you know, I was really excited to see your shop here because I was talking to Dave, like, I feel like I straddle both those worlds. Like I'm, I'm way more mainstream than a lot of people who might frequent that shop, right? But I'm way more woo for a <laughs> lack of a better way to put it, right, than a lot of the mainstream people. So so I'm, I'm somewhere in between. So yeah. I went in there and I wanted to go there. That was like my one like recon <laughs> must go to flickers. Um, and the lady that runs, it was just so fantastic. Uh, Isabella and I just fell in love with her and she has this great little shop and they've just doubled in size and, um, uh, it, everybody found things that they wanted to purchase there and, you know, salt lamps and singing bowls and tarot cards and, you know, crystals. And um, so, so she and I talked for a long time. And um, and so she told me that the South towns are very community minded and the North towns are, are much more individual. Ah. Um, And so uh, I actually had a friend tell me, Oh, I used to live in that area. And, um, You know, I I don't think you'll like it there. Um, But he lived in the North Towns. (laughs) I have now discovered. (laughs) So we'll see. Um, 
But just, you know, I mean, it takes us 20 minutes to get to the grocery store. It takes us 45 minutes to get to downtown Greenville. It would take us 20, 25 minutes to get to downtown Buffalo from here. Um, you know, we're, we're planning on going to Niagara after this. Uh, oh. take, Is take Isabella. You know, that's like a 45-minute drive. Like, <laughs> yeah. If the borders were open, we could be in Canada in 40 minutes. Like, <laughs> it's just crazy. So, yeah. And it's really worth it um, to go up into that, that tower that they have. Yeah. To be able to see Niagara from that view, man, that was amazing. I actually exactly. had the opportunity to eat. We ate dinner there in the rotating restaurant. Oh, on the Canadian side. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was so cool to just, I mean, be able to see all the angles, you know, 360 while yeah. you're eating. is like, that was amazing. I thought I was going to get seasick, but <laughs> Yeah, Dave and I were up there two years ago for our anniversary, and um, right about now, I guess a little bit, I don't know if we were there at the end of March, beginning of April, if we were there early for our anniversary, or if we were actually there for our anniversary, which is the end of April, but um, but we did that, and we stayed right on the on Horseshoe Falls, uh, so we, we opened the window, it was really cold when we were up there. Um, we just we opened the window a crack so we could hear the falls and we would just sit there you know make make sure the heat was cranked up in the room and sit there and just watch and listen and oh yeah it's amazing none of that yet we'll be on the american side but uh you know eventually the borders will open yeah and, uh, yeah we'll be able to take her over on the other side but we found um the one house that was on the market that we were looking at online um, was a flip house and we went to see it. It's just, it's a, we could make this work house <laughs> and this is not a, we can make it work, you know, move. <laughs> this is a, this might be the last house we buy move. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, no so, settling uh, and tolerating. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we don't have to move so we can wait for the right house. We can wait to move. All of that. Um, so the the realtor that I've been talking to um, is a mom, and she's in business with her brother. They have their own their own company, and so he showed us around, and we learned pretty quick that he has flipped houses. He has done construction, so he was the perfect person to have with us because he noticed those little you know construction things in this 1900s flip house, you know that that were important. <laughs> that we might have not, you know, even thought to look for. Um, and so then he told us that he had two friends in his neighborhood who were talking about moving. One definitely was, and um, one probably was. And he managed to get us into their houses. To look at them. <laughs> not even on the market yet. And you've already got, you got people. <laughs> exactly. I love it. And, I got um, people. Well, it's the only way we're going to buy a house up here at the market. Yeah. I mean, like I said, one house in our price range. Um, and uh, and the only reason it's still on the market is that they aren't looking at offers until April 10th because they're trying to collect as many offers as possible. Right. Um, because, you know, that's their business. And, um, yeah, so we looked at these two houses and they're, they're both Cape style houses and super, super cute. Both of them would be fantastic. Um, but we, uh, we've actually reached out. That's why I was waiting to hear from him. We told him last night, you know, Hey, you know, we're, we're interested in this one. We'd like to offer this much. Um, you know, they don't need to worry about anything, but move out. Right. They've got two little kids. My gosh, if I had two little kids and somebody came to me and said, I'll buy your house, just move and be all over that, you know, you don't have to get it ready to show. Yep. And, and uh, you know, there was scribble marks on the wall, but you know, we're going to want to paint probably anyway. And so we'll see. <laughs> you can check your phone. I mean, Oh, I, I, I sent him a message. I told him, you know, I called him back before you and I got on um, hoping that I would have, you know, some news to share. Yeah, right. Um, and he was in a meeting. And so, uh, I told him, I was like, you know, we're recording until this time. And, um, but I can call Dave. 
if you really need to talk. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, you got back up. I got back up. Yeah. So we shall see. Hopefully they'll say, you know what? Yeah, sure. Especially since we don't, you know, we, we haven't, we told the realtor, he's like, when's your drop dead? You want to move by? And I was like, Meh, middle of August. He's like, oh, oh, we can make that work. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> so we'll see this or something better. That's the mantra that I try to li- live by. So yep, that's where we are. I'm going to hey. take that on over here too. This or something that's- better. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I started using that when I was dating and uh, oh. it was like, yeah, no, I couldn't live with this for the rest of my life. You know, <laughs> all right, something better. Where are you? <laughs> and I met Dave and it was like, hmm, actually, <laughs> I think I'll choose this. So, yep. Yeah. Wow. And Isabella is so lit up. And I'm, I'm so present to moving here, starting her back a year in high school mm. um, since New York schools are really good and South Carolina schools not so much. And, you know, she already has a gap between where she is and, and South Carolina. Um, so starting, starting fresh Mm. repeating ninth grade is going to be beneficial, I think just all around. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and also just starting in the school with everybody else who's starting in the school. Right. Even though they've gone to middle school together. Right. Still, um, that that'll, that'll be, you know, that'll probably be good for making friends too. So, yeah. but, but also sense. just the, the independence, right? Like she's just so tickled by the option of walking to school, the option of, you know, getting up early and stopping at Tim oh. Hortons and getting a coffee and, um, or one of the local coffee shops. And, um, wow. I'm looking out the window because the high school is like, right across the street (laughs) from our Airbnb. And, uh, and even that, right. Their colors are purple and white, you know, our sort of family color is purple because it's Dave's favorite color and we've all sort of adopted it. So, so even that seems. (laughs) Yeah. They're a little serendipitous right there. I mean, it's all literally coming together. Yep. I wonder if I mean, easily. Right. So what would you say would be at the source of that freedom and ease that is showing up and that things are just falling into place? If you were to point to the source of it. Well, I think, gosh, I think a lot of things. Um, One of the things that comes to mind is when Dave and I started talking about this, it was a one day, someday right? Like, where do we want to retire? I think is how the conversation started. And, and then we got really clear, like we just started, you know, going back and forth. What are the things that we really want? We want, we want water. Water is more important than mountains, but we want access to both. Um, But, you know, he grew up in the Tampa Bay area, quick and easy access to the beach. Um, I always, and like water is one of those things that really grounds me, I guess, you know, has me feel yeah. my big, bold, wild, badass self, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's your element. It's my element. Your element. Um, and, and that's just, you know, based on experience rather than, you know, any kind of charts or anything. It, that's just my knowing. Makes you feel good. And that's what matters. Makes you feel good. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, so then we just started talking and then, I don't know, one of us said, you know, Honor's graduating. This fellow doesn't really care about staying in South Carolina. Why wait? <laughs> so then we really got excited and, you know, went down that path. And, and I think... Like we definitely, we definitely have the desire, but there's no attachment. 
Mm -hmm. Like there's no, um, this must be, this has to be, you know, we're really just putting it out there. Um, One of my mentors, early mentors is Dave Ellis. um, And he says, get clear, get proud and let it go. And I feel like that's what we've been doing, right? We got really clear on what do we want? Where do we want, you know, we want water and mountains. So that either means we need to travel to the other coast or, and I was like, you know, with all of our kids on the East Coast currently, we don't necessarily want to be way out west, even though those mountains would be amazing to be close to. But, you know, um, and so we started looking in New Hampshire. And we spent a lot of time in New Hampshire, but, you know, the housing costs were just a little much for us to, to imagine comfortably doing. And somehow we ended up, well, you know, it doesn't have to be ocean. It doesn't have to be like lakes within the state. What about the Great Lakes? <laughs> and so then we started looking along Lake Ontario and we ended up in Rochester for a while, but something just still didn't quite click. And then I offhandedly said to Dave, you know, I'm really going to miss the German influence in Greenville, you know, as half German myself, you know, I love being able to go to the German bakery and pick up, you know, Stollen for, for Christmas and, you know, just these little things, you know, they have pretzel rolls and things like that. And so Mm. um, I don't know what he Googled. (laughs) The next thing I know, he's coming to me and he's like, hey, check Hamburg out. (laughs) okay um and it took me i don't know three weeks to be able to say hamburg instead of humbug (laughs) so um i felt like i was betraying my german roots saying (laughs) with an american accent (laughs) um and so you know poking around here is like yeah this actually might work and then i joined their facebook group and and the way people interacted with each other, you know, and the, the t- town's tagline is the town that friendship built, you know, like, I'm like, yes, like, that's what I want. <laughs> so it's just everything just seemed, you know, it's like the other, the other thing, one of the things that I, I, I never realized this as a sort of distinction, but one of the things I coach people in, in relationship is take a step, And if the other person doesn't take a step, you know, stop. But, you know, so often we take a step and then we take a step and then we take a step. And that's how, you know, those codependent relationships evolve because one person's doing all the action and then they get resigned and, you know, this person feels crowded. Right. And it just, it doesn't work. Yeah. But I feel like that's what we did. Right. Like, we took a step and then, you know, Hamburg's like, oh, and then there's this. And we're like, ooh, okay. It was like Hamburg was taking a step, you know. <laughs> so, and, you know, we really, we haven't been attached. We've, we've looked at the area around, but then we keep coming back to, no, like, really what we really, really want is we want something that's walkable. We want, you know, yeah. we, we want that. We want, like, sidewalks. Who knew sidewalks were just such an exciting thing, but like (laughs) sidewalks, that's. um, Yeah. Coming from, you know, living in a a rural area and it's, you know, rocky and, you know, raw and earth and all that. And yeah, yeah. sidewalks are a really big deal. Well, and like a good green way. Right. Well, like, like Dave said, you know, he can ride his bike or we can take a walk in our neighborhood, but it's just to ride the bike or just to walk. And like there's no destination other than, you know, back home. Right. <laughs> and you know, mm-hmm. you, here there's so many more options and you, know, you can stop along the way. You can, you know, go to visit friends, you, whatever it is. And yeah. Um, and, and then wow. um, Barbara has been freaking amazing. She's like, I'm, I'm reaching out to all my friends to see if they know anybody selling a house, but I'm not putting it on Facebook because I don't want other people to know. 
<laughs> so she's like our own okay. personal, you know, like she's just fantastic. And um, you've already been embraced. The town right? already embraced you. Exactly. And so she found a she found a house uh, that was going on the market. Uh, oh, it was Sunday was our first day here, Easter. And and the, the house was they were planning on it going on the market the next day. And it was a son of a friend of hers. And so we were able to go see it uh, sun, Sunday night, I think, is when we went to wow. go see it. And it's out uh, in, like, the neighboring town. And, and it, was, it was beautiful, you know. It would have been fantastic. And what we really got from going to see it is, uh, no, like, what we really want to move here for are the sidewalks, are, you know, the proximity, you know, the fact that we can – walk to the grocery store or walk to the restaurants or, you know, walk to the library, bike. Right. And so it was great because that also gave us the juxtaposition, right. Of it didn't feel right. And so we trusted the feel of it. If it's not feeling light, then it's probably not it. And uh, so that's another, another distinction that definitely has been guiding me. Yeah, is the feel Doesn't right? Feel like, yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, one of my one of my dear friends, and and she's become kind of my spiritual advisor. She's been reading my my cards, and and you know, my angels have been talking through her since the beginning of the year. And she taught me something the other day, and you know, because I'm making a lot of decisions right now. And she's like, "You got to check in and see what your body says." And I went, "Huh?" I mean, I know about the whole, you know. If I'm stressed, my shoulders go up or if I have a, you know, gut, right? And, you know, my gut can sometimes be something telling me something from the past. Like it's trying to warn me of a perceived threat, but it's not like it's not real. So how do I discern what's, you know, actually a true message? Like what is my true self? How do I, you know, stay on that? And she said, you know, you stand up, both feet planted on the floor, both feet literally planted on the floor. Well, you can't see me now, but so it's just weird to have just this part, right? But you, <laughs> and you check in and you say, you know, is this right? And you allow yourself to get present to that. And then whichever way your body falls, and it could be to either side, it could be to the back and it's like day by day, but it's like really be with the experience of what is your body saying? And then whenever you want to ask it, you know, you're then familiar with a new feeling like you're disrupting that, that, um, you know, what automatically comes up as emotion because you'll feel like whichever way it it goes. And I'm like, Oh, that's so great. So it's, so it's, if you fall forward, then it's something to do. Yep. If it's sideways, it's like a no but it's not, it, it's what your body tells you. Cause it could be side to side. Right. You know, it could be, I fall to the right and that's my yes. You know, if I, if oh, I, I got you. left, that's my version of no, you know, and it's like, does this feel good? You know, and teach yourself to say, you know, what, what is your body saying newly about yes and no? Yeah. Cause you know, there's, there's stuff in my head that wants to try to protect me for something and, and it wants yeah. me to just be in action and find somewhere to live already. You know, go get it. Go find somewhere to live. And that doesn't feel right to just like go choose somewhere like you were saying earlier about, you know, what do I want? What don't I want? And the other thing that I heard in what you said was um, actually saying. And like that has really put that ball on the court and it's rolling. And oh my goodness, it's exactly 110. And I happen to look at the clock. <laughs> Hi, angels. I'm listening. It's all good. Love you. Um, but, you know, it, it's like saying what you actually want and then things just start to move towards that for you. Yep. It, and then it's, it's easy and it feels good. And, and, you know, and you're in the experience of, really no that's very clear that does not feel right yeah this would be settling this would be tolerating this would be compromising and no 
you know, and you can compromise with Dave. I mean, if there's something that he really likes about it or doesn't like about it, I mean, there's conversation to be had, but there isn't like a, I don't hear that there's no, I want to be in the city. No, I want to be in the suburbs. Yeah. We're both like, no, this is what matters to yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. And all yeah. three of us, all three of us really are in sync with that too, which is fun. Yeah. You know, when we came back from looking at the houses, Isabella, it's like, well, you know, can I be part of the conversation about it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, you're not going to get final say, but you absolutely get to, you know, get to be part of it. And we sat and we, we wrote a, a list of pros and cons for each house. And, and uh, we realized when we wrote the list for, and it's the, the less expensive house too, which just makes I mean. it even better. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when we wrote the list for that house, you know, we were like, oh yeah. And then there was this, and then there was this, and there was this excitement when we were writing the list. And when we were writing the list for the other house, now the, the living area is beautiful. Like they've, they've blown out walls and, and they've created this nice big open space and, um, you know, it, it's lovely. And Dave really wanted an open concept kitchen. And, um, but that was really it. Mm. And there were just so many little things about the other one that hmm. we realized. And Dave's like, well, you know, I do the bulk of the kitchen, the cooking anyway. So I'm okay with that kitchen. So, and then we started brainstorming like, oh, well, but then we could do this and we could have, there's all that storage, right? You know, the, the stairs to the basement are right off of the kitchen. So, you know, we could keep a lot of things down there, you know, the air fryer, or, you know, whatever, and just run down and get it. Um, you know, so we started coming up with solutions. Um, awesome. And there's this, this workbench area, you know, we both wanted to do woodworking and they've already kind of got, a space created in a way and, <laughs> and there's a home office in the basement and wow. uh, you know, the master bedroom is, is the top floor on a Cape, you know, it's, it's like a floor and a half, right? It's the, t the second floor is not full. It's under the roof. Um, but the master bedroom's up there and there's all kinds of storage, like under the eaves with, you know, doors that, you know, you'll need to hunch down to go in, but, You've got storage right there off the master bedroom and right there off the stairwell and uh, just all these little things that just uh, felt right. And not to mention the fact that they had this really cool cat that showed us around. <laughs> now, granted, the cat's not going to stay, right? But but the cat met us at the door and was like, oh, good. You're here for your showing. Here, let me you know. <laughs> following us around. And <laughs> How cute is that? I love it. It was so sweet and a super chill cat, like really great. Oh, you're opening that cupboard? I'm not allowed in there. Here, let me dart in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what fun. But yeah, it just, um, yeah, we, we, we could all. And one of the things I love about old houses are built in, you know, cupboards and things. Yeah. And it's got these two corner uh, cupboards on either side of the dining room, on either side of the, the patio door that are built in. Um, it's just, it's got charm. It's in a great, you know, very, 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 very busy neighborhood. Um, I mean, there were kids on bikes and people walking dogs and, you know. Uh, yeah. A neighborhood. A neighborhood. Neighborhood. Um, and my dog is going to have some serious, serious adjustment issues. <laughs> she's gonna bark herself hoarse with everybody walking by the house before she realizes <laughs> okay i need to pick and choose <laughs> but yeah yeah and there's you know there's there's training tools and things to you know reacclimate. yeah you know and it's so yeah. awesome that you know isabella like look you know for somebody to be you know a freshman in high school usually at that age it's like no i don't want to move i don't want to uproot myself even if it's not what they want it's like you know i don't want to uproot my life the way it is now you know i'm used to this i know how to do this i don't necessarily like it but i know how yeah. and um you know for her to be excited and, you know, even knowing that to, to repeat ninth grade, which is a brilliant idea. I mean, when I moved dramatically, um, I started in 10th grade 
And yeah, it was really, you know, I was absolutely odd man out, you know, and um, even though they all went to school together to start all at the same time, both of, you know, all of us being in the unknown together, all of that. Yeah. Um, it's a bonding opportunity. It is. Yeah. And, you know, her freshman year was during a pandemic. You know, yeah. Everybody, everybody could probably stand to repeat a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know that I would want to do over this year, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. So, yeah, she's uh, she's really, you know, every once in a while she's like, you know, I just I just found this friend group and I'm really going to miss them. And but then she jumps right back into something she's excited about. You know? Yeah. And, you know, I think I think looking at the personality of, of both of the kids, you know, this this works out well, too. Yeah. Connor is very much, um, you know, woodsy kind of guy enjoys, you know, he's got his one or two close friends and, and that's what's important. And, you know, very introverted and and. Uh, you know, Isabella, I think, is more like me. She may she may be introverted, but she's she presents as extroverted. Yeah. Um, which is how I am. You know, I need to talk things through. I need to hear things. I need to, you know, so friends are really important. Um, and I think more so for her. Um, and uh, you know, this environment will will give her that. You know, she'll be able to go to a school that has lots of different options so she can, you know, check out theater. She can, you know, join the ski oh, club. I can see her being part of theater. Right. Oh, oh the school plays and oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. She's so expressive that that is, that just went blam, click. <laughs> and, you know, there are other just things beautiful. too that are exciting. You know, I was telling the, the realtor, I said, there are no public pools in the South. And, uh, you know, somebody told me somewhere along the way that it's, it, it was purely out of racial reasons oh. that pools became private in the South. And, you know, little things like that. It's like there's public pools and there's public tennis courts and, um, oh, my gosh, and the green spaces, the dedicated green spaces all over. You know, there's so many little parks and I mean, we, we passed a, a playground uh, yesterday when we were walking just two blocks away. And, oh, it was, if I had little kids, man, I know that we would have been taking a detour to the playground because it was a beautiful playground, you know, just yeah. all kinds of towers and structures and Aww. lots of things to climb on. And, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Look, thank you for sharing so much of that. Like, it's so vivid. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally, like, so excited for you. And I'm excited to come up and visit you. Right? Like, I'm really excited. And it'll be in the summer. I don't like snow. <laughs> Love you. Don't like snow. Not a problem. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll look at it. But no, not a fan. Um, <laughs> too many years of digging out of it. Um but I'm also, you know, I'm hearing just in general as, as a practice, as something to take on in, in, in the world of dancing in the unknown is, you know, the way that it's been is like, I've been feeling really irresponsible about mm. dancing in the unknown, like just sitting back being like, okay, angels, tell me what to do now. Like, and it's just felt really powerless and, and very, um, you know, very irresponsible. Like I'm supposed to be doing something. And I started looking at like what actions and what I'm hearing and from what you're sharing is like, okay, the actions that I could take is to actually say, what do I love? What makes me happy? What lights me up? What brings light to my life? What, you know, and I'm sitting here and you guys can't see it. I mean, you might be able to see a little bit of it behind me, but, um, you know, I'm completing this year long program. And in that year, I have amassed like all these inspirational things and post-it notes and, and tchotchkes and, and coaching things. And I'm sitting here going, none of that is needed. Nice. And I really want a clean space. I want like, you know, I do want somewhere to jot my notes, my, my thoughts down. Like, the you know, okay, great. I can have a whiteboard. Like, what do I actually want? What is serving me? 
you know, and in cleaning out the stuff creates space. Yeah. You know, right now there's so much stuff. It's actually got me kind of, you know, um, it would really take something for me to move right now because of all the stuff. And I'm a single person. People are like, oh my God, you're in a five bedroom house. I'm like, well, look, I really only take up like two bedrooms. And then I start to look around. I'm like, well, wait, there's two bedrooms and half a two car garage or one car, one car garage, not two car garage. That'd be crazy. Um, and half a garage. Oh no, wait, I've got stuff underneath the bed in the bedroom of the other. Oh, well crap. I've got stuff in the closet there too. Oh my God. I'm actually taking up all the space in a five bedroom house. I'm a single person. Are you kidding me right now? No wonder why my foot's nailed to the floor and I'm so grounded and I'm so now it's starting to feel stifling and trapped. Yeah. And it's like, I couldn't move right now if I wanted to. I mean, I could. Right. But it would mean like half my stuff in storage. Right. You know, just because I didn't have the time to sort it out. So, you know, actions to be taken is really get clear what, what serves me, what works, what, you know, and begin to create the space for something else to show up. So right now there's no room for anything to show up. Those are actions I can take. I think I may have mentioned this last week, um, but, uh, when I had my emotional stress diffusion, one of the things that I really got was every, I believe that everything's connected and yet I don't necessarily always operate like it is. So, you know, I think, well, there are certain actions I have to take to build my business, right? You know, I really should be promoting my business, (laughs) Um, you know, things like that. But one of the things I I was reminded of, again, um, from Sarah in my emotional stress diffusion last week was clearing out the clutter is quite possibly the most important thing that I can do Hmm. for my health, for my business, you know, for my happiness, right? Like every area of my life that clearing out the clutter creates space for whatever it is, you know, like it's almost like there's no room for clients in my life because of all my physical clutter, because the physical clutter causes mental clutter too and emotional clutter, right? So so that's what I'm taking on. Uh, I mean, that's what I took on last week, and that's that's really when I when I get back. I'm I'm already, you know, we've got three more days here, but I'm already kind of itching to get back and go through stuff and pack because no, damn it, nothing is moving unless it is desired, like unless I really want it here. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've never, I've never really been very empowered around my clutter Mm. and I am (laughs) right. Like, it's like, let's do this. Let's get rid of some of the stuff that I've been hauling around for decades. Yeah. It doesn't serve me. Mm -hmm. And so again, right, you said at the beginning, you know, we're in very different places and there's common threads. And, nice. and there's another common thread, right? Like, yeah, really giving ourselves the gift of only having things that make us happy. Yeah. Hmm. And even giving ourselves the gift of of trusting ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Like trusting that me cleaning out my house is going to have the clients show up because oh, I'm I'm going to need to up my 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 business game for us to move. Um, probably. I mean, Dave's looking for for jobs right now. He's you know, his current contract is ending. I'm hoping that that's not going to get in the way of buying a house. Um, and well, things have been going for you guys. It'll, it'll be the next perfect thing. 
Exactly. And he's looking at full, a full-time job. Um, he's actually gotten a couple steps in on a full-time job that's fully remote out of the University of Seattle, I think it is, somewhere out west um, in the Pacific Northwest. And, you know, that'll allow us to have insurance and days off and retirement and all these things that you know, we haven't, you know, we've been taking care of on our own. Um, and, you know, with, with the health concerns that we've had in our family, it will be nice to yeah. have some assistance paying for some of these things. <laughs> yeah. And then we started talking about, well, but, you know, food costs are going to be higher here. And all right. <laughs> Dave looks at me and says, you know, we won't be feeding Connor though. So <laughs> <laughs> when you're not feeding a 17 year old boy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that changes things that, that would probably just make the difference up right there. Right there. Exactly. Right there. Mm. And there was something else. Oh, driving. Right. I mean, no matter uh. where we go right now, we have to drive. And, you know, the shortest drive is 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back, right? Like, you know, here, if we are going to go for a big, you know, grocery store run, we, it might be five minutes there and five minutes back, you know, in the car. So we'll, we'll definitely save a lot of money on gas. And uh, yeah, it's oh, all going to just work itself right out. And, you know, the other thing that I'm hearing is like, the level of physical activity because there's like a draw that, you know, like all of the, the health and well being is just going to flow. You know, it's just going to be right exactly. there naturally because you're just going to be, you know, moving your bodies way more. Cause like you said, where you currently are, you know, it's it, you walking out into the wilderness and to no destination, but now you're like, Oh, I forgot something at the store. Yay. I'll go taking yeah. the dogs for walks instead of just opening the door and letting them run. Exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah. yeah. All of that. So much more physical activity and yeah, that's all gonna. I saw on Instagram a couple of days ago that um, it was, it was the perfect reminder. Um, it was, a uh, what did it say? Something like um, don't view exercise as punishment for eating too much or eating the wrong thing. Hmm. View it as um a challenge to, you know, discover how much your body can do or what your body is capable of. Huh. And I loved it. And the timing of what? it was perfect because I had just walked 12,000 steps and my body was screaming. And, you know, this is a two story house and I'm looking at the stairs going, I can't. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, you know, I really, what, what I got present to is I'm, I discovered what my body can't that I think it can <laughs> and, oh. and that doesn't work. And yeah. I, I'm excited and ready to, you know, get back to a place of, yeah, my body can. Yeah. Way cool. So, oh, and then they have this grocery store. So it's called Wegmans. <laughs> oh, I've heard of Wegmans. Have you heard of Wegmans? And uh, they have one in Raleigh and, um, uh, uh, you know, somebody on the, the Facebook page, you know, I posted, you know, what are some of the things that we absolutely should check out when we come? And somebody posted Wegmans. I'm like, it's a grocery store. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like. It's own experience. Trader Joe's and Earth Fair and Harris Teeter and like all mixed into one. Like, oh, freaking amazing they have this huge cheese department and a massive meat department and oh my gosh the 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 grab and go food right like the prepared food section yeah was like probably three times bigger than any other grocery store I've ever no been. kidding i mean they you name wow. it they've got it and and apparently it's all you know at a higher caliber you know like I don't know if the entire store is, I don't think the entire store is organic, but you know, like there's more safeguards, right? Kind of like Aldi, right? Like Aldi has taken on all of their products are going to be, you know, this is the cap. Um, yeah. So 
and, I, and now I'm like, okay, now I get, now I get Wegmans. <laughs> so. Well, my friend, it has been a lovely episode. Yes. I'll yeah. talk to you when we're both in the Carolinas again. <laughs> yeah. I love you. I love you too. And thank you for just letting me share. Oh yeah. I feel like I've been collecting okay. things all week and, and have just been sharing with the two family members who are here. So, yeah. Oh, really great. Yeah. I knew you were going to, yeah, there's going to be some cool stuff over there. I can see your pictures and posts and everything. I was like, oh, I can't wait to hear. <laughs> and as always contributed to me. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is, you know, if, if any of the voices in my head are, are right, you know, and it really isn't a good move, we can always move again. Yep. And you'll have way less stuff to move around. And we'll have way less stuff to move. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> and we will have experienced here, but, you know, we're both Northerners by heart. And, yep. you know, we would love to experience real, true seasons. Oh, and the grass. The grass. The grass. It's the little things, right? Like <laughs> the grass is just naturally grass that you could walk barefoot in. Whereas in the oh. Carolinas, it's not. You know, you have to you have to pay a lot of money to have your yard be, you know, barefoot ready. Yeah. For sure. Mm. So it's it's those little things. It's just it like it is. Well, go walk in the grass, so, enjoy the all of it, Niagara, all of it. I love you madly. Love you too. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing how much we've grown in the next week. Yep. I love it. I love you. Bye. Bye, honey.